Romney Charlie. The crew of Tranquility Base is back inside their base. Everything went beautifully. Over. Hallelujah. Tranquility Base, this is Houston. Over. Roger, go ahead. We'd like to say from all of us down here in Houston, and really from all of us in all the countries and uh, in the entire world, we think that you've done a magnificent job up there today. Over. Thank you very much. It's been a long day. Yes, indeed. Get some rest there and uh, have at it tomorrow. Man has landed there and man has taken his first steps there. I wonder, Eric Severide, just what there is to add to that. In this new world and this new reality and the quickness of the adjustment of the human body and nervous system from the weight of gravity on Earth just the other day when we were in the Cape to weightlessness for several days and to the moon's one-sixth gravity and somehow it adjusts with that speed and uh, totally different elements. This is, overwhelms you. And then when they, they moved around, uh, you had a sense of uh, that they were in a condition of joy. It, uh, I never expected to see them bound, did you? Uh, no, we'd, no. Everything we'd been told was that they would move with great care, foot after foot with great deliberation, that they might fall. And here they were, uh, like children playing hopscotch almost. For like colts almost, when they find like their legs. Like finding their legs, exactly. And that, what we thought was cold and desolate and forbidding. Uh, somehow they found a strange beauty there that uh, I suppose they can never really uh, describe to us. No, no, we it, know. And it may not be a beauty that would can pass on to future no. beholders either. No. These first men no, on the moon couldn't. have seen something that men who follow will miss just a smidgen of at any rate. They've peered into another life that uh, we can't follow. Small television sets are now becoming commonplace at bases in Vietnam, no matter how remote. And the GIs have been following Apollo just as they would in the United States. What do you think of two men landing on the surface of the moon? Well, I would say it's certainly the most fantastic event of my lifetime, certainly. And in the end, I believe somewhere around $25 billion has been spent on the space program to reach the moon. Man will have to decide whether he could afford more money, say, into the cities, the slums, urban renewal, or into the war effort here. Well, it really didn't impress me too much until today when I was talking to a former Viet Cong who works for my company. I was talking to him through an interpreter, and we were trying to explain to him the United States is putting a man on the moon. And as much as we explained to him, he just refused to believe it was possible. And it really hit home at this time that the United States is accomplishing a fantastic feat. Pope Paul VI has felt the thrill. At the Vatican's splendidly equipped observatory near his summer residence at Castel Gandolfo, Pope Paul followed the events of the unbelievable night. Like thousands of other Italians, he followed them with a sense of warm and intimate participation, watching the all-night coverage and hearing the commentaries on Italian television. And like thousands of others, waiting for the tremendous news of the safe landing, the announcer's exclamation, a toccato, it's touched down. I suppose the Pope, in all of his knowledge, uh, and I'm sure he had a great deal about the space program, must have, as he exulted in that landing and, and the success up to that date, that moment, must have also had some apprehension about getting the men back. Uh, if he didn't, he certainly should have, because that was the critical moment. Uh, getting down on the moon, of course, was, was tough. Uh, the walk was uh, tough. They were all the first time ever, clearly. But now we had to get them back. And uh, there had been no opportunity to test the LEM, the Lunar Excursion Module, uh, in, uh, in the environment of the moon. We didn't know what all of that dust might do, and there was more of that incidentally in landing than I think anybody had really anticipated. The moon experts had talked about a, a lot of, uh, of debris of that nature flying around, but uh, that, that cloud was pretty intensive. 
and the idea that it might have in some way damaged the propulsion devices to get those men off the moon, uh, I think must have occurred to all of us from time to time as we waited that, uh, that next and most critical moment, the firing of the LEM rockets to propel it up uh, to meet the uh, command ship up above them. I don't suppose we've been this uh, nervous about a liftoff since uh, back in the early days of Mercury, were we? When we hear these words from Terry White, we have liftoff there. Uh, it'll be a great sigh of relief. Five, eight, seven, six, five. Work stage, engine arm ascent, proceed. Down on beautiful. 26, 36 feet per second up. Five, little pitch over. Engines firing, they're on the way. Quiet ride. There's that one crater down there. A thousand feet high, 80 feet uh, per second vertical rise. Oh boy. <laughs> Diggity dog. Huh? Off and running now. Yes, sir. Eagle Houston to request manual start override. Their words beautiful with the firing, then very smooth, and then very quiet ride. Armstrong Eagle and Alden. Houston, They're just short of 22 hours on the moon's surface, on the way back now to rendezvous with Mike Collins orbiting overhead. This is the next to last checkpoint before the actual docking. Okay, Mike. Uh I'll get, uh, try to get position here, and then you got it. That's uh, from uh, Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin, the pilot of the lunar module, saying, uh, try to get position here, and then you've got it. I've stopped. Matter of fact, I can stop right here if you like that. Okay, Mike, I'll get position. Buzz Aldrin lining up the lunar module, saying he can stop there if... Uh, Collins likes that position for his maneuver to come in and dock. The docking uh, procedures begin now. As you pointed out, Wally, we've done these dockings many times now, and uh, this should not be a uh, particularly dangerous part of flight since we have proved out the system so many times, but uh, that doesn't keep us from having the sweaty palm again as, as we wait for the... the accomplishment of docking and knowing they're really locked in there together. Of course, we know that uh, Mike has a boatload of fuel there because he had enough to pick them up out of an orbit as low as 10 miles above the moon. So he I'm has... not going to do a thing, Mike. I'm just letting her hold that attitude hold. Okay. Okay, there's Mike. They're both talking. Aldrin's job now is just to maintain the position and the proper attitude uh, that might to uh, close in slowly at uh, about a third of a mile an hour, I think. It was very, very slow, yes, in. indeed. The uh, Lamb or Eagle is really flying under automatic control now for attitude, just sitting there dormant. It's now, as we use the word, passive, and Mike is flying the command module to close. Oh, they must be docked because he's pumping up cabin pressure. Yeah. They're equalizing cabin pressure. They are docked and hard docked. Yes. The way I understand... Here we go. We'll get a story. Uh, Apollo 11, Houston, go. Good, and call up from Houston, uh, Apollo 11. Okay, Ron, thank you. Apollo 11, uh, meaning that they're no longer Columbian Eagle, but they are docked again in that configuration. Almost everything yet to be done by the Apollo 11 astronauts had been done earlier by Apollo travelers, but one thing was wonderfully unique. The crew of the Eagle had to move themselves and their priceless cargo of moon rock samples into the vehicle that had been known as Columbia. Then, the part of the limb that had carried them from the moon was discarded, just as the limb stage that had brought them to Tranquility Base was left behind. The command and service module fired its engine at 12.56 a.m., on Tuesday, July 22nd, to get itself out of lunar orbit. 
Then the reunited trio of voyagers was truly on its way home, two days away. The speed of the homeward bound Apollo increased as it got nearer the Earth at 25,000 miles per hour 